Up to kick a legend where we athleticize your art and put art into your fight. I'm here once again with Archie Luz of Undisputed Martial Arts in East York, Toronto, and he's going to talk a little bit about footwork from Carlos Ilistrismo and how it can be applicable to boxing and other combat sport. Take it away. Hey, right. So, uh, basically, uh, in Carlos Ilistrismo, we have uh, some footwork that you normally see in most other Filipino martial arts. In general, what we call tatlong bao, or three coconut shells, would be uh, something with one way we practice it. Um, when it comes to the footwork, uh, we have two types. Where one, where you come in and out. This is good for close range fighting, where we're gonna move right out and in. So say a knife attack is coming in, you know, you can notice the attack. If the attack was coming straight here with a cut, I could move out and in. All right, so again, moving out and in. So if I stay here and then step across, I'm gonna right. So out and in. Now in the case where I do have a weapon in my other hand, and I'm, in the case that I do have a weapon on the other hand and I can move around it, I can use what's called, say, a Pusada block, a pluma, okay? Another thing that we covered before, where we move around. Now the footwork changes. Uh, mainly because I can get by, I can step through without getting hit. So the footwork is what we call combate general, or general combat. Um, the footwork changes quite a bit. So if I were in this position here, leading with my right foot, and I want to move over to the other side and not get hit, providing I had the means of being able to deflect the attack, block it, or... or uh, Parry it, I'll step through and let my back foot drag behind me. Well, allow it to pivot right around. So I could do it again in this direction. I could do it in this way as well. All right, so that's very fast. It does a couple of things quite quickly. It allows me to move offline, but also allows me to set up my angle of attack. It gets me into a position where I can actually start to throw something with power, and also at the same time, a little bit more distance from my opponent's attack so I can uh, judge what's going to be coming at me. So the idea is, say you throw a hook, okay? Okay, that hook comes here, I've got a bottom move. In general, I'm going to stay here, right? Yeah. Um, now, the only problem is I'm head to head with you. There's no advantage for me to be here. I want to be off to the side. I want to work on flanking, right? So I can get to the side and throw a big attack. So what I would do in this situation, instead of just staying here, I'll step under. Now, here's where to come back to Henry Footwork is modifiable to boxing. In, in, in Cali, I would turn it to the point where my left leg would be behind. Now being a right-handed fighter, it may, not be the, it may not be the best situation for me, because now my, my power hand is a little bit too close. Mm -hmm. I can't really get too much power on it. The short little hook, which is also pretty effective. But that, that, that doesn't allow me to throw a big punch. So where I really make it work is through here. I step through and drag. Okay, so pivoting on the back foot when I come underneath. And again, I'm, I'm going to go into that. I'm going to traverse that line. That's going to me, bring me right across. Okay, but without backing out, without backing out, where I can get hit by a cross, where you're going to throw one at me, but move away. Position where that cross now has to traverse a much greater distance, and I can see it coming a mile away, but I can throw mine much faster. So, what I do is when I bob and weave, I come underneath, got my weight transfer in the back leg, I'm gonna turn it over to the front. Okay, so again, when I come under, got my back leg here, which is my right leg, me being a right handed fighter, load it up. Ready to go and just and run right over your shoulder. Nice thing about this, if you were to throw a cross, I'd land mine first. You can use the combat the handrail footwork as you bob weak, turn that into a short hook. Okay? So my right hand no longer becomes that big round cross, it becomes a shorter hook that chops over, which in, in most cases creates um, an opening for my left. Okay? But at the same time, it's a punch that's not seen. As you can see what happens here, 
I change the axis. Normally the axis on my lead hook would be on my left foot, but I'm gonna put it on my right. So it comes underneath and spin around. Now the only way I can do that is just to use what's called the combate general to work from in the streets nowhere. I lead, I, I, I lead with my right foot and I let my left leg slide behind. Now, in the case of a fighter like uh, Vasily Lomachenko, uh, he's a southpaw. What he would do here in a situation like this, he'll use the same concept with that pivot. The pivot, and this way he's got more range with his, his left, and at the same time, knowing that his opponent's only recourse really at this point is to be able to throw his cross from way back there. You'll see that coming about way picking we can choose his attack, right? So, okay, so you can see as I step through, in slow mo, super slow mo, I'll drag that foot with me and so, you know, I get my balance corrected and bam, there's that weight transfer from one foot to the next. As a southpaw, then a little easier. I will step underneath, let that back foot drag while I have all the weight in the front foot and that would set up a short little hook, a check hook of sorts, right? Nice thing about that, got more range of my left cross, left uppercut, sorry, left cross, left hook, okay, for a number four, okay? So as a southpaw, Lomachenko, but often you see him stay this close, right? As the guy turns, to this pivoting, pivot, So, I find when I'm trying to keep this straight, uh, I think a lot about what my next punch is, right? So if I'm bobbing and weaving, and I want to do uh, the first thing Archie showed, <clears throat> I'm gonna think about priming my right hand, which, and thinking about turning my left shoulder, which automatically kind of keeps my left foot in front. Uh, if I want to do the second one, where I'm dragging my left foot, <clears throat> I think about, throwing that next punch. It's kind of, once you've been hitting enough, your body's gonna start doing what your, your fists are kind of asking it to do. You know, so uh, while the footwork is the key, I think getting the big picture, how it's used, will help keep it straight on, um, you know, if you're confused about which way to turn, which way to shift your weight. Sure, exactly. And that's where the beauty of uh, martial arts like Ali, uh, even Muay Thai, Muay, a lot of Muay Thai fighters are uh, equally able to fight from both stances. Uh, you know, some of the upper echelon boxers like the Mayweathers, the, the Rigondos, uh, and of course Lomachenko can fight either way. You know, but in most cases, they'll want to stay in their strong stance. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, give that a try. Uh, one way to put some of the Kalisini Sissimo footwork into your boxing. And we'll be back with a few more episodes on a couple things that you can try out in your boxing. This is Roy Kick Legend here with Archie Lewis at Undisputed Martial Arts. Keep your chin down, elevate your striking.